Hey guys, welcome back to the channel. In today's video, I'm going to be featuring some essentials for music composition majors. These are some of the uh, tools and products that I use on an everyday basis to get uh, a lot of work done as a composer. And these are just the tools that I recommend because I've been using them for years on end. So you can skip around to the timestamps in the video or just look in the description if you want to get one of these products yourselves. I will get a small kickback from Amazon. So. As always, thank you for supporting me. So the first tool I'm going to actually mention is my computer right here, and this is the MacBook Pro. Uh, this is the 2020 model. It's not the M1 version, surprisingly. Um, this is the last Intel computer that they made, um, which uh, is unfortunate, um, but I, it still is fine for everything I need. And originally I was kind of worried about the MacBook Pro not being um, a good option for my major, but surprisingly it works really well. Uh, it has a great ecosystem with all my, you know, my phone, which is, you know, all Apple products work really well together. So it, it, it just kind of worked out for me really well. Um, and it, I don't really need a lot of like processing power with it. So it has everything that I need at uh, quite a premium price. But you know what? If you win more competitions like I do, you can afford these things. So moving on to the next thing, we're going to be talking about my MIDI keyboard. And I think all composers need a MIDI input keyboard of some kind um, for their notation software. So I'm going to grab it down here. This is the uh, MIDI Plus uh, AKM 320 right here. And uh, this is a really cheap, I think this is one of the cheapest options on Amazon. It's my MIDI keyboard that I use to input notes, or I can also use it just as a, a MIDI device in uh, DAWs like Logic. And this is what I use to just um, add notes to my scores. It's a lot faster than just clicking with your mouse because, um, you know, it, it's just easier just to have the notes here and then you use the number pad on the uh, on your on your actual keyboard to input the, the note values. But this is just a lot better for um, being more efficient and being more productive when you're inputting notes. So I, I recommend this keyboard specifically. Um, I believe it's 32 keys. It's uh, plenty of keys uh, for, for what I need it to do. Um, if you actually want to use like a full size keyboard, you could do that. But we're just thinking about our budget here because most of music composition majors are poor. And that is a, a fact I will hold to the grave. MIDI plus uh, AKM320, very good. Uh, MIDI keyboard. The next item we are going to be reviewing or talking about is the Behind Bars book. This is a fantastic reference book on all things on music notation. Um, and if you haven't uh, seen my video on music notation, it's linked up right here uh, about the importance of having good music notation because it can really affect a good performance. Um, if your notation isn't good, it's going to kind of ruin um, a, a perfectly good performance. Even if the performer is good enough, the music doesn't look good, that's an issue. Um, so this book has a lot of amazing examples on really specific things about notation and how to make um, your music um, be presented in a certain way to make it the most clear and the most precise for the performers to read. So it, it comes in all sorts, it has all sorts of different sections um, from just rhythmic things to just how to place things. Um, and there's uh, different sections for the instruments. This is like the keyboard section. Um, yeah, I, I, it's a fairly expensive book. I believe it's about $80 without the hardback, but um, I always have this on my desk. Um, it never leaves um, where I go because I do a lot of engraving freelance work. Um, I, I, and a lot of it due to my uh, a situation in college. So my professor actually hired me to uh, do a research project internship thing. And I use this book all the time to double check uh, my notation and engraving and make sure it, it is kind of what the industry standard expects. So I recommend this Behind Bars by Elaine Gould. Make sure to grab one of these on Amazon, link down below. Uh, the next thing we're going to be talking about is the Notation uh, Express um, templates. And this is uh, uh, some templates you can buy online um, provided by um, New York Music Services, I believe they're called. Um, but these are fantastic professional templates for chamber, jazz, and theater. Um, Specifically, it's for Sibelius because that's what I use. It's the notation software I use. If you use Finale, I believe they have templates as well. Um, but the uh, Notation Express uh, templates, as well as the uh, free Norfolk music font, which is technically free, but they suggest donating because uh, it helps them out, is a fantastic uh, tool of uh, things that you can use to speed up your um, template making and speed up your compositions when you're writing in computer software because uh, it comes with all sorts of different uh, tools that you can use at your disposal 
uh, to make your scores look very professional. Uh, a lot of the defaults on some of the software is uh, not that, it doesn't look that good and just easily slapping this template onto your current scores can make a world of a difference, so I highly recommend that. Uh, link down below if you want to check that out. And one of the most important things that I didn't mention is having some staff paper. It really doesn't matter what kind of staff paper you use. This is, I believe, sold by Hal Leonard, and it's just uh, this uh, really simple, like notebook size of manuscript paper. Uh, this is uh, 12 staff, 96 pages, eight and a half by 11, which is just letter size, um, and it is. Uh, good enough for what i needed to do if you want one that's like horizontal you could get them so it's kind of like this but this one is just like a regular notebook uh and it has all the st staves i need um, for when i write any sort of score it doesn't really matter what it is um usually i just use this for sketching and things like that i have a smaller moleskin notebook which i made a video on which is really nice but this is big enough um, where i can comfortably write on it um, so I always have like two or three of these in my bag or something because they get filled up pretty fast. Um, so I have to buy some new ones pretty soon. But always have some manuscript paper on you uh, if you have to, if you're in your like your ear training class and you have to do dictations, then you have to you know have staff paper on hand. So it's always important to have them, uh, kind of an essential for a music major of any kind. The last thing I'm going to be talking about is my metronome. This is a I believe a Toctel Piccolo metronome. Um, in the Ruby variant uh, and this is a tool that I always have on me as well as a lot of these other things um, specifically when I'm writing it's nice to know the exact tempo of the things I'm, I'm writing so and I, I really just like the old-fashioned uh, you know, mechanism of it um, if you look up closely there are these tempo indications as well as some rough you know guides to um, what the tempos actually are like Largo Andante things like that uh, and when you write in your score the tempo indications it can't just be some random number like 111 it should be one that's listed on here like the closest one would be like 112 or 108 those are the indications that you would use in real life so good tip I learned from my teacher but it's always good to have one of these it's powered by winding it up like so very um, satisfying so I really like these um, they're pretty fragile so I wouldn't be throwing these in your bag but have them on your desk at all times they're an important thing that I highly recommend link down below so thank you guys so much for watching if you want to know what I do on a daily basis as a composer I have a video about that as well as uh, things I recommend to beginning composers a lot of good tips there um, and again all the links are listed down below for any of these products if you want to do some late Christmas shopping you can um, it's kind of late but you know what it's worth it still so check those links down below anyways guys thanks for watching and keep writing.